side. They won that afternoon against Richmond. And now a long road to the MCG and his second premiership. The Eagles are premiers for the second time in three seasons. No debate. They have won in the most convincing style. 2023 to 815. They're celebrating in Western Australia. They're celebrating at the MCG. Well, that's their biggest score for the year. Imagine that in the grand final. You dream about that, don't you, as a coach? Biggest score for the whole season. And a deep camp with Robert Dipper and a minute ago. Dipper. Thanks very much, Bruce. Well, they've started the catch up now. Two premierships. Yeah, it's fantastic, Dipper. Geelong play well, but uh, our guys were on their game. It's fantastic to win. At half time, did you think you had the game of control? No, nah, you, you know, Geelong always are a sort of burst side and they kick a lot of goals each quarter, so we had to keep our eye on them and they played well to their credit. Now you've come over here and now you've conquered us once again. What's left uh, for the Eagles? Oh, just to keep on keeping on, Dipper, and hopefully, uh, you know, get up there again next year. You want to send a few cheerios back home? Yeah, it's all the uh, boys that are back in Kalgoorlie. Well done. Well done, Dean. Good on you, bud. Dean Kemp uh, with uh, the big dipper. And a Guy McKenna with Neil Curley. Thank you, Bruce. Well, Guy, you've had a great year all season as a team, and today you just showed the Victorian public and the public of Australia just how well this team can play footy. Yeah, we were very disappointed last year. We uh, didn't get the results we wanted to, and I think this year... Uh, to a man we stuck, I think, at a minute lead and we, we got the results, which is pleasing. We know Mickey's game plan. It's a, it's one of grind, grind, grind. And today you did just that. Your defence was superb. You had good midfielders and you finished up up forward. Well, certainly, I mean, uh, today's sides are very attacking sides. Uh, they're very good midfielders, so you've got to close them down. And it makes our job so much easier when the midfielders apply pressure. And uh, they're just fantastic. How much time do you spend on your defensive movement because it's so well executed? Well, Mickey, obviously, is a defend obviously a defender himself. Spends a lot of time on that because, obviously, being a defender, he gives you a lot of instructions, and uh, we do spend a fair amount of time. And uh, you know, it pays off when you have days like today. Well played. Enjoy the night. Thanks, Michael. Thanks. Now, uh, I think Michael Brennan, who stood Gary Ablett with the big tipper. Here's Bruce Wall. Congratulations! What a fantastic game you played today. Oh well, it's just fantastic to see the guys. We won the cup and it's just magnificent, you know. David Hart, David Hines, a few guys missed out in '92, and that was our motivation to let them feel this. Now, when did you know you're going to have Gary Ablett for the game? Oh uh, well, Mick sort of hinted at it on Monday, but I told him to save it till the team meeting on Friday. Yeah. Now, some special efforts uh, by uh, some of the boys. Some of the uh, young boys, a uh, young Tony Evans played well. Waterman. Oh yeah, I mean Tony Evans. You know, he's had the injury problems during the year, but he. He played very well in 92 as well. He just loves these days, mate. Now, thank you very much. Go and enjoy it, Monday. Thanks, Monkey. Michael Brennan, uh, who's played so well again today, Michael Brennan. He's mentioned earlier in the telecast he's played more games than any other Eagle. And yet again, Gerard Geelong able to... Uh, rather, West Coast keeping a team under 10 goals for the 12th time this year. So it all worked for them. The defence was as good as ever, and the attack has kicked their most prolific score for the season. And I guess that's a uh, tribute to the Malthouse game plan that he can afford to do that close down in midfield, particularly when the, the likes of uh, their great wingmen would, really didn't have a great input on the game and also have their offence really start from that half-back line. I think, I think, I think Dipper's got uh, Glenn Jacob. I certainly have, Bruce. Now, Glenn, what do you think about this one? Mate, I don't know. It's just... I wasn't convinced until the last five minutes. I, I mean, we won by a lot, but... Football is just a hard game. It's four quarters of football, man. And to win it for blokes, you know, who missed out 92, Cooper and Heinze. This is this is a walk down memory lane, mate. This is what you take to your grave. Dipper, you know, mate. This is, this is it. <laughs> now, Glenn, I saw you at three-quarter time just pump up the boys. Say, listen, oh, guys, yes. keep it together. Yeah, I mean, we had it. Everyone was quite aware we had it three-quarter time. But, I mean, football's a funny thing. Nine goals is not impossible. And Geelong have got the, the potent boards to do that. And... Um, we just had to concentrate for another 30 minutes and that was it. And that, that, that's all the 11 months since last November the 1st. The relief, the relief. relief. Go for it, buddy. Well, what a player he is, Glenn Jakovic. He's 21 years of age. He's played in 12 finals matches already in 21 and has won two premierships. And let's go down to the presentation to the West Coast Eagles, the Premiers, in 1994. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
Normally the John Coleman medal for the leading goal kicker is presented during an earlier finals match. This year we've been unable to do that as the winner has been playing in the final series and we felt it fitting, however, that a grand final crowd be given the opportunity to show their appreciation to one of the game's greatest, to Gary Ablett, who won his second consecutive Coleman medal after an outstanding season, kicking 113 goals. And to make the presentation, please welcome former Collingwood champion Peter Dacos. Another former champion and dual Norm Smith medalist Gary Ayres to present the Norm Smith medal to the player adjudged as best of field in the 1994 Foster's AFL Grand Final. And the 1994 winner of the Norm Smith medal is Dean Kemp. And now would you please welcome former Essendon champion, the great Dick Reynolds to present medallions to the players of the West Coast Eagles, the 1994 Premiers. Number two, Dean Kent. Number three, Chris Mainwaring. Number four, Peter Simich. Number six, Drew Banfield. Number nine, Peter Wilson. Number 10, Don Pike. Number 11, Ashley McIntosh. Number 14, Michael Brennan. Number 17, Guy McKenna. Number 18, Tony Evans. Number 20, Shane Bond. Number 22, David Hines. Number 26, Jason Ball. Number 27, Glenn Jakovic. Number 28, Chris Lewis. Number 18, Tony Evans. Number 30, Peter Matera. Number 36, David Hart. Number 39, Chris Waterman. And number 50, Ryan Turnbull. And of course, the captain of the West Coast Eagles, number 24, John Westfall.
and the coach, and the Michael Malthouse. And now I'd like to ask Dick Reynolds to present the 1994 Premiership Cup to the West Coast Eagles. Westfold and Michael Malthouse to lead the team in a lap of honour at the MCG. Well, they're a formidable group, there's no question about that. When you see the man for man go up there, and at the end, Mickey Malthouse, who in five years at West Coast has taken this team third, second, first, fourth, and first. If he was a racehorse, that's for him to win the Cox Plate at this level. And yet he's coaching in one of the most competitive competitions in the world. And at West Coast, we were chatting about it, Dennis and Jerry, just a moment ago. They look to have three or four great years in front of them. Same can't be said about uh, Geelong, unfortunately, at the moment. Thinking tonight, Mickey Malthouse is with uh, the Big Dipper. Thanks, Bruce. Well, Mick, uh, you're starting to catch up to the Hawks here, but a special day for the Eagles today. Oh, it was a good day. Everything... Uh appeared to go pretty well. I, I feel for Geelong. I think, you know, it was an absolutely courageous effort for them to uh, to get where they've got because they, they did it pretty hard through the games. And, you know, lost Hopping and shows you a great play here as they come back and get um positions in the last quarter, but very proud of our boys. Now, Mick, do you think we can get a smile off you? Come on. Oh, it... my, it's relaxed now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that relief must mean uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it was two years ago that we were up here and you just forget the feeling of before the game. I mean, you, get, you don't feel too well before a game, and uh, that's been with me all week. And I suppose if, if the first few minutes after a game finishes you, uh, it all uh, is all worthwhile. In the first half, there's some of the younger fellow like Evans, and a uh, young boy sent half forward ball played quite well. Yeah, I, I thought we had to hang in there long enough. I, I wasn't overly concerned by the first quarter, and I, and I thought even if we were, uh, you know, even if we were close to half time, I just thought that. If we stuck to our game plan long enough, it would work out for us. And, uh, you know, it was supposed to be fair to say. We missed a few shots early, which perhaps could have opened up a bit earlier than what we wanted. But uh, anyway, the result's the same. We've still won. Now, do you want to say anything uh, back home to the Western Australian people listening and watching now? Oh, well, Dick, we've, been, we've been having fantastic support right throughout the state. It's a big state. You know, I've been fortunate to be able to travel a little bit through it. And people from Albany up to, uh, to Wyndham, you know, it's... Uh, they're all very supportive of the club and there's a heap of people over here that have uh, paid a lot of money, driven a lot of miles to come and see the Eagles play and it's uh, a national competition, mate, you expect it. Well, well done on your second premiership and uh, congratulations and uh, thank you very much for your support to Channel 7 too. Thanks, Dick. Thank you. Mickey Malthouse uh, with Robert Di Vitaminico and... Uh, nice to know, Bruce, the day appeared to go pretty well. That's Close. what Mickey said. It's a good feeling and the day appeared to go pretty well. Well, it went spectacularly. 80-point margin. We mentioned earlier about blowouts and big results in the last 15 years. It's been a continuation of that. Eagles versus Dockers, some of those signs are saying. The changing face of AFL will continue next year. Oh, Dennis, what if they program the Eagles and the Dockers and the Subi early in the season? Won't that be a day in Perth? It'll be fantastic. Whether the Dockers are quite up to what we've seen today remains to be seen. We've seen something special today. We talked about Hawthorne through the 80s, well, the West Coast Eagles emerging as the team of the 90s. I mean, we talked about the young players here, plenty of potential. This team could dominate AFL football, certainly of power over the next four or five years, as we said, so much potential. There. So many 25 and 26 year olds that have got at least three or four good seasons. And I think Jason Ball probably symbolizes the fear from other teams when they yeah. look at him emerging today as Craig Turley looks on, Godden's there, and also we saw Carl Langdon earlier on. There just seems to be no stopping with their depth. They've got Gehrig, is it Gehrig is supposed to be yes. a very good player? Mitchell Warren well. could have almost pinched the spot today. I've got an eye for talent. You've got